We live in a world where unity unlocks the extraordinary and we are constantly witnessing the power of collective action. There's so many things going on in the world. The reef is under pressure all around the world. So for us it's about highlighting what we can do to make things better. How do we get involved? How do we stay positive? So without the health of our waterways, without the health of our drinking water, without the health of the water in which we interact with every single day, we are connected to the water. There's enormous power to use citizen science and the community to make a change. We do like to talk about coral in our beautiful backyard, um, but I also just want you guys to know that you might not be from here or even Australia, but there is stuff that you guys can do. The guests that are coming out, they want to learn about the Grey Barrier Reef, they want to learn what they can do, um, and what we're doing as well. In this episode of The Frontline, we're taking you behind the scenes, revealing what's uniting these people across the reef in this race against time. That's the real power, to work together, to learn from each other, and to collaborate and make a difference. When it comes to thinking about how actions on the ground can impact the reef, I like to paint a picture from residential to rivers to reef. Everything is connected. Whatever we do in our homes uh, eventually leads to our rivers and then in turn leads to our reefs. So the whole communication perspective of the partnership is to tie that link that even if you aren't actively visiting the reef every day, you are still a part of its health by promoting the health of your local waterways in which we interact with on a daily basis. A lot of the uh, fish fauna and fish diversity that you find in these waterways has elements of their life cycle that they spend part of their life in fresh water and they spend part of their, their life in salt water. Fish like jungle perch, uh, mangrove jack and barramundi. So all those three, they're really key um, you know, species that we all like to go and fish for. All three of those species need access to salt water for at least some part of our life cycle. So it's really important to have those good connections between fresh water and salt water habitats. So today we're sampling uh, the water here for fish and using a new, relatively new technique called environmental DNA. Projects like this, and especially in the citizen science space, so this really provides a bridge between that really technical science element versus the actual sampling collection. And the sample collection is quite a straightforward process, and that's something that anyone can do if they follow the right protocols. And we can go and collect those samples and then send them back to the lab and all of the really complicated uh, lab work they can do uh, back at the uni. It's really easy um, to get samples from accessible sites to look at more upstream areas. So the technique has so many applications. It's about getting a, a snapshot of the, the diversity of fish species that are in a waterway. So a lot of these systems have had, uh, you know, water quality has been affected and you know the, the, the condition of the vegetation around streams has been affected and that all flows back to the health of fish communities and, and the health of our fish stocks and therefore how productive our fisheries are. So the reef is one of the great wonders of the world and as we all know uh, it is under threat from a myriad of pressures. Uh, the world is uh, heating up, there's pressures from land use, um, runoff into the system um, and everybody plays a role you know uh, what blueprint does is it brings together scientists and citizen science community members with tourism operators with researchers and we're bringing everybody together so before the sea level rose this used to be all flat country and now people used to be able to walk from what is early beach now to the outer reef which is about another 30 kilometers uh, east of these islands uh, so it used to be all flat land So being able to um, connect people to you know, our stories, our sea country, the land, uh, the sky, the animals, uh, it's all an important part of being able to um, create a bond between people and the earth. Citizen 
science is fantastic. It's like having a whole nother group of scientists out there doing the work. So it's like more hands on deck. Scientists, they can't be everywhere. So if we can work with citizen scientists, then we can train them, tell them what we need. Uh, we can have so much more data collected and just this fantastic engagement with the community. The community gets a lot from it. We get a lot from it. It's just a win-win for everyone. So Reef Check Australia has been working within this region for quite a few years now and the project that we're here for in particular for today, uh, it's, it's all about collaboration for us. So we've been doing some Reef Check Australia surveys which is reef health methodology. Uh, we're just looking at the reef health overall and how that's going. But what we're really interested in is also looking at different types of projects that engage more people. This is actually a project we're looking at to enable people who can't necessarily get in and do snorkel or dive surveys, but potentially a way for them to then come and do some reef habitat mapping as well. Then those images will get uploaded to an AI program and uh, look at using AI to identify what makes up the substrate. So we're going to try and flick this drone up now. The sun's out, the rain stopped. Okay, so it's really amazing all these new technologies they're bringing out and um, this is just another tool in the way we can help monitor our reefs and check what's going on. You just need to be passionate. Get out there, you want to get out and um, teach the community, help them find ways they can get involved, whether it be through volunteering or doing different things at home, taking that first step. And I think I've reached a point in my time where I want to volunteer again and give back to the environment and also teach those around me. We volunteer to go out on trips with local tourism businesses and we have a bit of a chat to people informally or formally on the way out. Sometimes we'll even lend them a camera so they can be a marine biologist for the day. It's become clear that water quality is uh, a very important science that we need to improve. So in the context of citizen science, there is just so much the community can do when it comes to monitoring and research, and that is really exciting for the regional report cards. You know, you always appreciate, uh, you know, healthy environments more. Is that every single action that you do has an impact on the world. Connecting people with the land and the country is how we inspire change. We are connected to the water. It promotes healthy physical health. It promotes healthy mental health. And as I try and say, even to my kids, 1% each day, just that one little percent will make a big difference.